Thanks a lot for chiming in to this week's tip of the week. Uh, exciting day for us here. I'm here with my brother Tom. And so together, two of us, a couple of the founding fathers of Baylor Brothers, the hardscape business that most of you know I'm affiliated with. Uh, it's a company that Tom and I and my other two brothers started back in 1985. And uh, obviously you can see what the two businesses have grown to. It's been a tremendous blessing to have two successful companies. And together we do a lot together. The two companies that we, uh, we feed off each other in, in many, many different ways. But we thought it would be a great opportunity to be able to have the two of us be able to sit and have just a simple, casual conversation and talk about primarily this, this week I want to talk about um, planning for future and end of year planning. And I think it's a very important part of the uh, important time of year that when we get together at the end of the year we start looking at our, our profits or losses. I think for the last couple of years we've been looking at profits and I think that's really the main focus on on how do we pre-plan in a positive and in a, uh, an effective way that can lead to uh, more prosperity in the future and we don't know what the future is going to hold even with some of the um, concerns on the horizon but it's a great time for uh, owners, business owners to look at where they've gone in the past year and then how to plan for the future. So. We had a few thoughts and we'll just kind of work through some of these thoughts and questions that, that we've uh, gotten in the past over the years. Different contractors call and ask different various questions on, on what do I do in these scenarios. So we're just going to have a great conversation here and talk about some of this future planning. So it was great to reflect back and I know uh, this was always kind of my favorite time of year as our, as our hardscape industry. We hammer down and flat out all year long and all of a sudden the end of the year I shouldn't say it's our favorite time of year because there were years when it was we were looking at the bottom line and saying uh, this isn't as pretty as we want it to be. But these years have been really phenomenal. So what would you say? And um, obviously, myself, I was always in the field. Yourself, you're always in the office. You watched the numbers a lot closer than I did. But this time of year, what would you say the most important thing was to really keep an eye on or for future planning? Yeah, it's a great question and. Really, you mentioned about this time of year. It's probably, looking at the date, maybe even a little late. This year-end planning really should be even maybe even a month sooner because you want to be working with your accounting accountant. You want to make sure that what you're planning is um, what you need. Sometimes if we have some profitable years, we get into a lot of our wants. But probably one of the main things um, is watching what your profit is and then planning on what your taxable income is. So those are two different things. You can be profitable, but there are things that you can do to reduce your taxable income. So one thing that you really want to make sure of is um, December 31st, if that's your time of end of year, you got to crunch. So there is, um, for tax purposes, um, with the government, uh, it's called Section 179. You can write off up to a million dollars in one year, and that can bring your profits down. Now, being said, that needs to be coached with your accountant uh, because you don't want to end up being cash broke when you try to survive your winter, as well as you don't want to be cash broke when we start the year. We can remember back 36 years ago, right? We, we wondered, <laughs> boy, we can't even imagine, mm -hmm. right? We could, Winners, we, we, we had no even, idea if we are going to get through the winter. Didn't even know if we'd get a paycheck. And, and we didn't get paychecks. And for those that are starting their company, a lot of this stuff is going to be new. We went to, uh, what college was that we went to, Phil? <laughs> School of Hard Knocks. School of Hard Knocks. University both, of University, Hard right. <laughs> we both got an A, didn't we? <laughs> Absolutely. But, uh, in all, in all kidding aside, a lot of us that get into this industry don't have the business background. We have the talent to do the work. And the business part of it really is what can be successful. What was that statistic that we used to hear all the time of success well, of landscape yeah, companies? Yeah, it was over 95% of all businesses fail in the first five years. So for those contractors out there that are newly starting a business, you know, this is something to think about. You have to get your head in the game in an early stage and start thinking about really on working on your business, not necessarily working on building those products, which that's part of it too, but the business, building the business side is crucial. And I think that's what we learned, and I, I always credit it to uh, Charles Vanderkoy. 
He's the one that taught us probably more about business than probably any other single individual in our industry. That um, And I'll have a quote for us later from Charles. <laughs> we could have several quotes because <laughs> Charles really did. And, and the same thing, there's that saying, you know, working on your business versus in your business. And all of us who are in this industry love and love to do the hands-on work. We love working in our business. But there is times, and Phil, you've mentioned this many times in some of your... Um, weekly tip of the week tip of the week you know work on the business work on the business it's it's crucial spending your money wisely and i think um like end of year planning is it's a crucial time for contractors and i think it's important to know that anything you spend to upgrade your business as far as tools or equipment a lot of them things are 100 percent write off and you can take it right off your bottom line and it reduces taxes so if you're in a 30 percent tax bracket a piece of equipment that cost you, or a tool that cost you $100 is really gonna cost you $70 because you'd pay $30 of that in taxes. So it's it's interesting to think about that. And I guess those are things obviously that we learned years ago. It was it was a lot of time and, and took us years and years to learn it. But I love, um, I love the fact that we can coach and mentor even contractors just starting out or even something that have been in it for a long time. And there's little tricks and tips that are out there that, that contractors can learn of how to how to better themselves or even be more financially stable. Absolutely. The other thing, this is a side note really from tools, equipment, trucks, all of that. But another thing big for us as contractors and for those of you who are, again, learning the business as you go, as we did, so I'm not pointing fingers, is watching your workers comp. If by chance you've had a really great year this year and you've hired extra help, you got to be careful. An example, say you normally have, I'm just going to use round numbers, $100,000 of workers' comp on your insurance policy. But say you've hired people and you've actually paid out $130,000 in payroll. That audit's going to come around in, oh, somewhere around March or April, and you're going to be audited for not only that money that the $30,000 over you are, but your new policy is gonna be at $130,000. That We've gotten that several times where workers comp. So don't forget, again, back to your accountant. Use the professionals. Phil, you've always talked about that. Rely upon the professionals that they can really help you. Yeah, I've and said it over us. and over, and that yeah, one of absolutely. my greatest mentors taught me that earlier, and taught us probably, and you'll never yeah. be good at everything. So you need to rely on those professionals around you or hire those professionals that can work for you that, that help take you to those levels or fill those voids that you have in your, in your companies. Well, Phil, one thing we have, I mean, we were told, right, just hire someone smarter than us. Yeah. <laughs> we could have hired anybody, huh? <laughs> uh, Tremendous amount of people yeah, we could hire. We got, huh? a, we got a lot of people we could hire. A lot of contractors know that we're a huge advocate when it comes to the right equipment, the right trucks, setting ourselves up for productivity. Um, how would you rate that as far as trucks versus equipment? Say a skid steer or loader or something like that. As far as which is beneficial. More beneficial. It, it, it's a million dollar question. We need to get to the job site, need to pull the equipment to the job site. The trucks, most of us know our trucks sit all day. We're not in a trucking business or we shouldn't be unless we just have lots of money and we buy trucks let people truck for you. So equipment is, is very important. We have a rule of thumb around here. We try to. We try to buy new equipment because we know the value of that. You've talked about it. Weigh out that cost over a 10-year period of what that machine's gonna cost you per year. Break it down per a month or per a week and you can see it's a very reasonable amount of money compared to help. Then it gets into your help and you're saying, well, does help wanna come and work by hand and dig with a shovel all the time? Or would they like to have nice equipment? So they all tie together, and you've brought this up many times about how the two of them, three of them, trucks, equipment, people, all come together. Trucks is a, trucks is a tough one because you, you need, again, we've been fortunate and, and have worked over the years very hard. You know, how do you set up the perfect truck so that you're as efficient as possible? It brings us to the point of we're in what kind of business were we in, Phil? We, we'd always we're say in the labor business. We're in a labor business. And right? How can oh, we reduce and by labor? chance we happen to do 
hardscaping. Yeah, exactly. So labor is where we make it or break it. And it, there's another point where every time we are an hour too long at one job, we're actually eating up two hours that's, because why? That's opportunity we can't costs. Beat. That's right. Those are the opportunity costs, and you've hit on that a lot. We uh, and I guess that's a point I really want to drive home between trucks, equipment, tools. The equipment and the tools; those are billable on a job site. We're not necessarily the equipment. Your trucks are trucks sit like you said at the curbside, and they aren't making you money necessarily. If you can sub that stuff out anytime we're on a job site, that's when we're making our money, not necessarily when we're driving around or, or spinning our wheels. You know, another thing I would mention about year-end planning, and really I would talk to all of you that are uh, business owners, if you've had a good year, buy tools, buy equipment, buy things that are gonna make your, your people happy. It's hard for us to get help. Don't go buying that new pickup and neglect buying tools or neglect buying equipment. That will not bring up the morale or build a good culture in your business. And uh, I, I didn't pay you to say that either. No, he didn't pay <laughs> me to say that. I pay him to buy all his tools, so, <laughs> which is good. We like doing that, and it's well worth it because good tools um, attract good people, and good tools keep good people. Yeah, and it keeps uh, you working wiser and keeps, smarter and absolutely. not harder. Absolutely. And, um, we are. Our, our, Bill, how, how many years did you go to a chiropractor? I still do. Still do? I still do. I go once a week, but there was times when I would go three times a week yeah. to keep my back straight and whatnot. I never, thankfully, I never had a back injury per se where I blew something out, but uh, I definitely needed that maintenance. I'm a small frame guy, and that's why we created those tools to start. It was moving those 82-pound blocks, miles and miles of walls we did. I remember years in the 80s, late 80s. It was that Versalock block that was the first one that came into our area, and we laid miles of those things, and it was it was tearing me up. So, yeah, and you were so Phil, you you did in working together for 30 years, you were on the wall division, uh, intricate heights, grades, different things where we did multiple levels, patios, walls, steps, all those things, and those were heavy, heavy pieces. Where I think uh, all your clients, you can tell why he's focused a little more towards those lifting tools, those things that can help lift the heavy equipment. And now even our pavers. Uh, look around our showroom here. These, these pavers are big slab pavers. If you don't have a tool, bigger. if you don't have a tool, it takes two guys to carry them. Yeah. And, and, and laying them and setting them. How many of you have tried setting a big block? Y your fingers are in the way. You're, you're doing a quick drop. It doesn't quite fall into place. You're, it, so the suction equipment and all that stuff has really helped our industry. And let alone, if you can have three guys on a job, and Phil, you talk about this, and I agree with it 100%. If you can have three guys on a job versus five or six. That's where we need to be thinking these days, just and that's, the way things that, are changing. And it is and the future. Less people getting into our industry, and I think the more we can eliminate that pallet to pavement pain, that's a success. And again, end of year is a great time to start thinking outside the box and sit with your sit with some of your key guys and kind of su study these tools plus system. I always say tools plus systems equal greater efficiencies, but if you can sit with your crew and kind of study on this, and we did this. We spent our winters saying, what can we do just a little bit better? And that was kind of what made us successful. Many of you know we, uh, we plowed for 15 years, yeah. I think, and <laughs> the trucks weren't conducive to what we were doing. We were buying light trucks so we could be have nimble plow trucks. And yet when it came to moving hardscape materials, Good we were overweight all the time. They were expensive. You're pushing four wheel drive around. So we did, we kind of stepped back and said, what can we do different to be extremely successful at what we're really good at? And it gave us that freedom in the winter time, not to be so tight on the plowing, but to start just reeling inside and our, racking our brains, what little there was there, but <laughs> we had a lot of fun and we dreamt up all these crazy ideas and crazy tools on how we could Take a simple guy off the street, give him a simple tool, and all of a sudden he's doing the job of an extremely skilled craftsman. So I want to thank all of you for watching today. Um, this has been a tremendous opportunity. Tom and I, we talk an awful lot. Um, but to be able to sit in front of a camera and talk, even to you as contractors, 
And uh, I'd ask the question, do you have other topics that you'd love us, love us to visit about? Um, you got over 70 years just between the two of us of um, industry experience, starting back in 85. So for yeah, 37 years, we've been in this industry and pretty much uh, the hardscape industry. So we thank you for watching and always you can go on our website, pavetool.com. You can sign up there for our tip of the week and check us out on all the social media platforms, whether it be YouTube, um, Instagram, all those platforms you can check us out on. But thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Thanks again, Tom. Great to awesome visit with day. you. <laughs> we have a good day. We have a good day. Yeah. <laughs>